But Mexico is a different story. Mexico is special, and we can talk about it for a second because it'll make people real happy. Mexico probably has the largest reserves of silver in the world under their ground. This is a very special place that Mexico, I think there's some South American countries that that have a ratio similar to Mexico for the square uh, mileage of their land. Mm -hmm. But Mexico has a lot. Mexico is in a very good position, a very good position to be a financial leader in what comes next after the dollar goes away. So very, Mexico, very, very, very interesting. I never thought about that because that's yep. what Pat is saying is absolutely true. Anyone who's in the precious metal sector knows mm -hmm. that Mexico is flush with silver. Yep. That's why the Spanish went went there you know whatever hundreds thousands of years ago that's very interesting as that relates to this bricks. i guess bricks situation mm -hmm. so basically uh mexico is no longer selling silver to us i believe that started this year and that's something that everyone can look up uh for a while they even leased a lot of their silver mines to china that was a two-year lease and then when that lease was over they announced to the world that in over a two-year period they were stopping selling silver to the world mexico knows what's going on just like the states know we're in trouble our bonds are losing value Mexico is saying we're in trouble because our currency is losing value because we have to print more to keep up with uh, the dollar denominated debt we have to other nations. And they're exporting more uh, inflation to us. The, uh, America is exporting inflation to us in Mexico. We have got to do something. And what they have, they have real money under their ground. Okay. I mean, this is a really special place for Mexico to be. I wish it were the United States that had this much silver, but we don't. We just mm -hmm. don't. We we mind it. You know, it's mostly gone. Very you know, we, interesting. So the BRIC nations are basically for anyone who's in the precious metals community, you better watch what the BRIC nations are doing, how many people are joining them. Um, and uh, I understand in August they're going to activate their version of the SWIFT system uh and actually start working that way in other words that gets them off the dollar it, i forgive me i've said it before i don't know what their version of the swift system is called rob i i knew it at one time and i've forgotten i have to empty parts of my brain to make room for other things sometimes i've i know and i and you know i i wish i could seem really smart and have it for you pap because i've heard it yeah. as well there is yeah. a there is a a, a term for it but i slipped yep. my mind as well yep but the important thing to remember is the swift system that currently regulate or it not regulates it is the electronic payment system for all world trade and it carries the dollar that's it because we own the swift system america owns it isn't that great we don't own any silver under the ground but we do have an electronic payment system for world trade right but here's the deal the BRIC nation's version of SWIFT will not carry the dollar. The dollar ain't there. It'll have lots of other stuff on it. It'll have Chinese renminbi. It'll have uh, Russian rubles. And the ruble, by the way, is making a comeback. No one's wanted the ruble for 80 years. No, no country wanted it. So Russia had to buy, you know, through resources in their country, buy other currencies to do trade. So they have oil. So that's how they're getting along right now. You know, it's been other things in the past. Platinum, they have a lot of platinum there. Yeah. So at any rate, gang, the, the BRICS nations basically are about ready. And, and as like, I, I don't know how many, there, there's the BRICS plus is what they call it now. I call them BRIC nations. But um, so Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Those are the five initial nations, BRICS. B-R-I-C-S, but it's BRICS Plus now because all kinds of other countries are joining and we got to pay attention because when that SWIFT system is deactivated for those countries and they go onto a different electronic payment system for trade, dollars are going to come home at a fast clip. These dollars are not going to sit in these other nations. So what they will do is they will buy something from another nation that still accepts dollars or from the United States. So we'll have a sudden inrush of dollars. 
and it will happen relatively quickly when that when their version of the Swiss system gets activated. I don't know that it's being activated in August, but I do know that the BRIC nations are having a giant meeting with all the countries that want in in August. So something big is happening with them in August. And, and, and all those and all those dollars, I want to point out to the viewers coming back, that's highly inflationary. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's a that's a hyperinflationary event. Because yeah. there's a lot more dollars overseas than there are in the country. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, guys, that's yeah, uh, they won't have to print money, you know, anymore. No. When that happens, there will be no need to print money. But of course, all this will will filter up to the richest people. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this, this isn't things, you know, where you'll have money, you know, thrown away on the streets because it's basically worthless. That's not that scenario yet. What'll happen is this money will literally, I'm sorry, this currency will be going to the richest one, 5% maybe of the population, and they will buy tangible things of value. They're not going to hang on to it long. And that's why it will flush through the system and then become hyperinflationary. Mm -hmm. yeah. It won't be instantaneous. Because remember now, it's not like they, they get a big old vanilla envelope in Kenya and stuff all their American currency in it and ship it back to the United States. They actually buy things with it. They get rid of it by buying things with it. And it may not be America. They may be buying it from, uh, let's say, England that still accepts dollars for trade. They might buy something from England um, but most likely it's going to come to the United States because England's going, uh, we don't want that. Yeah. Um, so, and once again, even if it is another country that's, that's accepting dollars, for instance, Australia, um, it's still hyperinflationary for them. Yeah. So guys, this scenario that we're painting right now may unfold for us, unfortunately, this year. We may not have very many, much time before we hit another huge bump in the road of, of inflation, big inflation, maybe even to the levels of hyperinflation this year. Then the digital dollar is coming in July. And, 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 and it's the, the Fed is becoming less and less able to uh, have an impact like these new factors, geopolitical, like you just talked about, uh, the, these are these are factors, inflationary factors that are beyond the ability of the Fed to have a real impact on with their yeah. with their tool set. Um, well, yeah, it's a different it's, it's a different world. It's a different the, world. Yeah, their extended tool set too. We have given uh, we have left so much munitions behind in Afghanistan that ended up on eBay, you know, or whatever. Right. Uh, you know, tanks, you know, for eighty five thousand dollars or whatever, and and not to mention all the armaments that we have given to um, the Ukraine. Um, mm -hmm. The Pentagon has said that we need four. I think it was four hundred million dollars to replace thirty million dollars worth of yeah. munitions and so that's gouging that's price gouging by the military industrial complex i'll be the first one to say it but the fact of the matter is um we don't have the munitions right now to use our military to go over to these countries and force them to use the dollar the way we have in the past um and this is a fact gang iraq yeah. afghanistan after 9 11 they weren't interested in the dollar. They became very mm -hmm. interested in the dollar once we literally installed new governments over there. It's kind of weird how it happened, but you know. <laughs> so I'm, you know, this is YouTube, and we yeah. have to watch what we say. Yeah, well, and 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 it makes sense when one considers the big picture. And I sure. know it can be difficult. Um, what was the term you used earlier? Willful, will, willful, willful ignorance. If you right. step away from willful ignorance and start to kind of dig around and look for reasons as to what's going on, not just domestically in the United States, but on a worldwide basis, like you just did a great job talking about. Uh, if, if you're willing to have that courage to do that and to think for yourself, right? Uh, which I know a lot of my viewers, a lot of the people that are watching right now are, 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 are that type of person. It makes sense that on a state by state basis, we're seeing this kind of organic movement toward mm -hmm. uh, bringing back silver and gold as legal tender. You bet. And one more really good point that maybe I never really did, you know, spell out, you know, in, in any great detail anyway, is the fact that states are not forcing their constituents to do anything with all this gold and silver legislation. The Federal Reserve forces you to do things. 
The federal government forces you to do things. But the state's legislation for gold and silver, whether it be a depository uh, down to literally gold uh, and, and silver as legal tender, um, you know, getting rid of capital gains taxes, the only thing that's being forced on anyone is on the state itself, not on the people. You and I, Ron, will not be forced into using gold and silver by yeah. any legislation that's in the state of Missouri. And by the way, I know enough about the other states legislation. They're not being, they're not forcing their citizen. They're providing another option. As you said, an escape hatch, or as I said, a lifeboat. Yeah. And then the thinking people will have an option. Those who are willfully ignorant or brainwashed against using gold and silver as legal tender or as lawful money are the ones that will end up maybe shooting each other over a can of peach, like the stories we heard in Venezuela when they went through hyperinflation. It's up to, go ahead. First Mining Gold is a development company advancing two of the largest gold projects in Canada, Spring Pole in Ontario and Du Parquet located in Quebec. Each already has 5 million ounces of gold reserves, but exploration initiatives are underway at both projects to find even more gold. First Mining is well-financed, has zero debt, and owns an interest in four additional Canadian gold development projects. I really appreciate you bringing that up because I hadn't thought about that, right? Yeah, this is not being forced upon the people. Um, and, and I'm trying to think of a good analogy, but since I can't, I'll just say that that speaks for itself, mm -hmm, right? It does. <laughs> that, uh, that this is not a, a situation where we're saying, well, you have to use gold and silver now. You that that's the new money. You this is it. You know, blah blah. No, it's here's this option. Uh, it's interesting that what is generally, to a certain degree, forced upon us is something that is uh, eroding quickly and mm -hmm. uh, and and doesn't have seem to have a real bright future when you look at it from multiple different angles. Yep. So just providing another option. And in fact, the digital dollar, we're going to try to kill any legislation we find in the state of Missouri that carries with it the digital dollar. We've identified HB 1165, which is a standard interstate, you know, basically contract law is what it is. Yeah. But they slipped some framework in there and the digital dollar in there. We caught it. We're fighting it. Um, in fact, we're, we're just going to kill it. It's not worth amending. Yeah. And so we're going to get rid of that legislation. We've identified it in 20 other states. Uh, South Dakota vetoed it. Uh, other states are having to do what they would through a large network of, of freedom or uh, liberty based organizations. We're fighting the digital dollar. So uh, we're trying to make sure that it's not forced on us like like basically what's happening in other states where they're not taking gold and silver it's interesting they're not fighting the digital dollar either you know for california and and for illinois um to not take gold and silver currency uh, they're awfully welcoming of the digital dollar so they're not protecting their citizens their state legislators have failed have failed in their flagship responsibility to their citizens which is protect their rights you know, this is, you know, Ron talked about willful ignorance and brainwashing before. Guys, work with your states. This is yeah. literally how you get things. Missouri is going to be a great place to live. And I hate to think that everyone in California is going to flock to Missouri. But my God, if I were in California, I'd, I'd hightail it to Missouri as quick as I could. If I understood everything that I do understand as a Californian. Yeah. The states are not, there's going to be a lot of states that are going to be very uncomfortable to live in. And and so Missouri <clears throat> is going to be one of those bastions of freedom. But gosh darn it, Tennessee's going to be one of them too before we were. <laughs> uh, wow. So yeah, that's just the uh, the uh, competition in me. I'm very right. happy with what Tennessee did, and the yeah. fact that they got it done at breakneck speed tells me that they're taking this seriously, and yeah. uh, that makes me happy. Yeah, and it appears that uh, more <clears throat> and more states are doing the same. You know, on behalf of my viewers, I want to say thank you, Pat, uh, first for your time and insights and information that you uh, gave to us today. But just on an even more general level, thank you for all your efforts that you're, you know, I know you're working tirelessly, uh, mostly focused on Missouri, but the efforts you're putting in to make this gold and silver legislation, um, 
you know, to make it a real thing, not just for Missouri, but I think you're having an impact even beyond Missouri. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. And and thank you for, for saying that. Uh, say one more thing. Uh, yep. Our website, mofree.org, if you want to get on our email list, we update everybody with all the legislation that we're following in the state of Missouri. SB 100 is top of the priority list for us here in Missouri. So that's a way to find out about what's going on or how to be involved. If you're in the state of Missouri and you want to partake in this effort, we'd love to have you. And this is the easiest avenue to get involved is just by literally getting on our email list. And then basically we have all the information that you need to be active in this and participate and have a positive impact. But secondly, um, I want to say that we're going to have a hearing in the House that's that's coming up here pretty soon. We don't know. We don't have a date yet. We got feelers out for that. But sometime in the near future, we're going to have a hearing on the House on SB 100, the gold and silver bill in the state of Missouri. And because it's in the House, we have video and audio. Mm -hmm. So you may want to carry that on your channel, Ron, when I let you, because okay. I will physically be in Jeff City. There is no way for me to carry that live for everyone. And it's it, they, the her, hearings are not always, but sometimes on Tuesdays. So okay. during your live ah, stream, you may want to cover yeah. that that hearing live by going to the Missouri uh, House website and going to this live stream from the hearing room and then just presenting it, you know, through your channel live on YouTube. OK, That's you a great guys idea. will be able to see me testify, but I understand there's dozens of people that are going to come in to testify and we may even have a surprise visitor, real nice surprise visitor for uh, for testimony as well. Uh, this is the part of the process we go through the testimony that was done in the Senate. That was back in February. That was done in February. That was a long time ago. But we've had this holding pattern in the state of Missouri, but we're, we're working through this. And by the way, <clears throat> the general feeling, the general consensus is this is wildly popular up in Jefferson City, but you never know until you see the votes. Right. You know, uh, so we're still working at phone calls, emails and visits to Jeff City on gold and silver is still going on to this day, gang, because we're fighting like we're going to lose, even though it feels like. We got this in the bag. I can't operate that way. This is far too critical, far too important. And I'm not sure that legislators understand what's going on geopolitically and financially like I do. Yeah. So you're I got to make sure. You're, you're, you're going to keep running full speed ahead through the finish line. Through yeah, the finish absolutely. line. Not absolutely. Not going to let up. Not going to let up till you run through that ribbon, yeah. right? Yeah, I know. And I got to, you know, I got to catch up with uh, with Tennessee now. You know, I thought they were going to have to <laughs> catch up to me. Um, but uh, good for you, Tennessee. Uh, thank yeah. you for showing the nation, you know, basically your priority list is literally to start getting your state ready for the eventual fall of the dollar. And other states should be following what Tennessee is doing. And by the way, you you and I have talked about Tennessee before. It went through the House and the Senate with no resistance. Do you remember that? Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 98 to zero, you yep. know, in the House. I, I don't know what it was in the Senate. 98 to zero. You know, I think we both commented there was uh, that was a pretty commanding uh, victory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's no way to really misinterpret or misunderstand that. You know, no. it's it's. it's uh, so the the legislature in Tennessee understands what Ron and I are talking about now, what Ron talks on his channel. The dollar is dying, folks. Yes, it's America, and that could never happen to us. I get the arguments. It's dying, folks. Other nations, we're exporting so much inflation to other nations. They're de-dollarizing right now at alarming levels. 2023 looks like it's going to be a very interesting year for those who hold dollar-denominated assets. And uh, I think that, you know, basically, it's incumbent upon us, those of us who have this knowledge and understand, speak about it, tell other people, gold and silver, if you want to invest in Bitcoin, God love you, you just got to get out of the dollar. And you talk about the dollar is dying. It just can't, comes to mind. I think we could almost say the dollar died already, right? Because if we go yeah, back to- It's on life support. When, 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 what year was the Federal Reserve established? It was 1914. 1913. 1913. And you look at the uh, what the dollars lost. I hear different figures, 96%, 99%, 98%. The dollar already died. Yep. Um, and, you know, I think that with everything going on geopolitically, and when we look at this de-dollarization, I think it bears repeating that when 
CNN and Fox are talking and doing stories about de-dollarization, you better believe that it's very likely that it's real, because what is that telling you when the big mainstream media outlets are talking about? Well, and that's one more thing that we should say here for your viewers here, from my point of view, and, and, and that's why I'm here is to share my point of view on things and how they're going. And once again, it's so everyone understands I'm not a, I'm holding gold and silver because I want to be rich guy. I am holding gold and silver because I want to eat guy. So that's <laughs> an important distinction. If I get rich along the way, that's awesome. That'd be yeah. cool. But uh, the fact of the matter is no one knows when this will happen how the dollar will die we do know the printing uh during covid was devastating absolutely yeah. devastating and people use um you know decimated that's one tenth this was literally much worse it was right. devastating so here's what you look for now if you want to know when the dollar's dead i mean dead to the world and that's when the brick nations activate their version of the swift system and start uh enacting international payments that's when you know it's over. And yeah. if you're still in dollars when that happens, you know, like I said, you know, you can look back to the stories of Venezuela where they were killing each other over cans of peaches. Because yeah. that's what that's what a lot of folks will be doing that decided they couldn't get rid of, you know, um, their do do dollar denominated assets. They couldn't yeah. get rid of it. Sentimental value uh, that, you know, somehow that it was anathema to get rid of this investment or that investment because gosh darn it, that's all I know. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not getting into gold and silver with at least a portion of your wealth, it's not going to be a good day for you when that when that uh, Brick Nation Swift system, because we don't know the name of it, because we're looking right. stupid. <laughs> when that goes online, <laughs> when that goes online, gang, that's game over. You know, the, as they say, that's the last nail. Now, it may not be instantaneous, but the f the the rushing of dollars back to America when that happens will be will be significant. Yes, it will. And it will be fast. It'll be very quick. And, you know, within a month, two months, three months on the outside, uh, because remember now, this all goes to the top first, the manufacturers, the big corporations that are selling things that we make here in the United States. So people in India will be spending all their dollars, uh, you know, with those corporations. So those corporations will have the money, they'll have it first. It won't filter through the economy until they decide to spend it. And they're going to buy assets of value. They're going to buy land. They're going to buy gold and silver too. Trust me, even corporations mm -hmm. buy gold and silver, by the way, gang, don't fool yourselves. It's not just central banks in the East corporations here in the United States are buying gold and silver too. You yeah. know, I don't have any specific data on that, but since, um, Oh, was that guy's name that used to report on this all the time passed away? Roby, um, Ch uh, uh, uh he's a canadian guy white hair yeah. okay uh he used to report on large corporations buying uh gold and silver interesting because that's what he did for a living he was a broker he found large quantities of gold and silver and and was able to get it to him uh so uh, yeah it may sound like i'm sounding the alarm that i'm an alarmist you know i'm just telling you this is why these states are doing what they're doing it's not because patrick holland is here saying, hey, you guys better get some gold and silver, you know, because it's yeah. really cool. It's shiny. It feels good in the hand. States recognize their pension funds are going belly up right now. They've got to do something. And it's not Bitcoin. They're not going to Bitcoin. Um, so, you know, take that into account. These states realize that the, the, the populations need protection. And they, the states realize they've got to encourage businesses to enact in gold and silver as well. That's legal tender. you got to get rid of the sales tax. States are doing that as well. Um, this is a serious, serious thing. In fact, it might be the biggest story of the decade. If, when the dollar falls, it's the biggest story of the century, yeah, um, for sure. But states are the only way out. The Federal Reserve and the federal government have been so busy screwing you over your entire life that they are the ones who caused this problem. It wasn't you and me, Ron. We did not cause this problem. Now, a lot of folks are bl blaming the baby boomers for causing this problem. Nonsense again. Uh, once again, the federal government, well, it has to do with politicians and it has to do with a, a central bank. They are going to print the, the dollar out of non-existence, but they have the solution for you. Trust me. And unfortunately, the, the solution involves a lot of death.
a lot yeah. of depopulation. And so that's the, the stark warning I give you guys. I love you guys. And I would not say stuff like this, you know, if I didn't really know or feel in my heart, this is the way things are going. But watch the Brick Nations. Yeah, Just it's watch more about, what they're doing. It's more about protecting yourself at this point. I mean, yes. We all want safety and security for ourselves and our families and our friends and our neighbors. At this point, it's more about protecting yourself as opposed to getting rich. And you, 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 I think you brought up a great point. Uh, it's like, why are the states doing this? They're not just doing it because, oh, we think gold and silver are cool. They're pretty. They're this. No, they're, they're doing this because they see what's going on right yep. now. And Absolutely. They, and they see what maybe is coming. They aren't just, you know, randomly deciding, oh, it's, you know what, we forgot about the fact that gold and silver were in the Constitution. We need to, you know, we need to start moving forward it's, with some legislation. Yeah, the, the the amount of states going forward with, with depositories right now is actually quite astounding. Even yeah. at, you know, at the ratio of the states that are actually going for legal tender or even getting yeah. rid of sales tax. This is because of pensions, folks. They're, the bonds are losing value and literally they're, they're selling off more bonds than they normally would. Right. In, in other words, there's less coming in and there's more going out because of inflation and the bonds are not holding with that. This yeah. is why they're doing it. And they, they may not do their entire balance. They may hold some bonds still, but they're getting into gold and silver too. Yeah. This is a defense mechanism, literally, to keep the pension system going in the States. Yeah, um, this is a serious issue. And Ron, uh, once again, I'm going to say again, I haven't said this in a while. But the reason why I'm talking to Ron is because Wall Street Silver was not interested in this story. They, they're not interested. They didn't want to talk about it. They didn't even acknowledge the data that I was sending them. Shame on you, Wall Street Silver. You could have yeah, been part of the solution. You're too busy trying to make money selling, you know, uh, penny stocks, mining penny stocks. We're talking about people's lives here. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is this is deadly serious. Uh, Wall Street Silver, I have nothing to do with you anymore. Nothing. You know, shame on all of you. Uh, this is, unfortunately, I mean, people that take this stuff into account. Ron is bringing you this because Ron agreed to talk to me and carry this story. I want you all to watch Ron's basement to remember that he wow. literally was very happy to talk to me about this. Yeah. And well, I know my, my viewers have enjoyed the, uh, the insights and information that you shared and the work that you're doing as well. I mean, I think I've noticed my viewers have recognized that also, Pat, I mean, it's going to be interesting what plays out in the coming months, <laughs> quarters, yeah. And yep. couple of years, we're not talking about decades. I think there's going to be some interesting developments in the next sure. year or two. Um, you know, to a certain degree, we hope we're wrong, but um, yeah. but but the uh, Brick Nations tell us we're not wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's not. Uh, things really Nations, are different. Things really are different. They uh, are. Uh, and and one more thing, I'm going to throw out there, and I'm going to uh, tread lightly on this. But if you're storing uh, gold and silver bullion in your house, I would recommend storing some lead bullion too, especially if you've talked to people <laughs> about it. It, it. Hopefully everyone can read between the lines on that. And yeah. I'm not saying that it's absolutely necessary and that there's going to be problems, but you just never know. Look at Venezuela, look at Zimbabwe. There's current, current examples, um, you know, literally in the last decade or two, where you can look at hyperinflation and what happened and how the people dealt with it, especially those who weren't prepared. You can yeah. look this stuff up. Now, you can't report out of Venezuela anymore on the hyperinflation, but during the first two years of it, they were allowing reporters from other countries to come in before they shut it down. Yeah. So, so we don't get necessarily all the truth out of it anymore. But guys, this is about hyperinflation. This is about whether or not you can eat. And don't worry, the federal government and the Federal Reserve have the solution for you. It's called total enslavement with a digital dollar, including, you know, social credit scoring and ESG, in which your life is completely under their control. That's their solution. A programmable digital wallet that says what you can buy, what you, what you can't buy, how far you can travel. All the decisions you make will be affected by the Federal Reserve and the federal government. They'll, ha they'll help you make all your decisions for you. They'll be very well, happy to do so. 
look on the bright side. If you're a person who has a hard time making decisions, you won't have to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. You, you, uh, the, what do you wear in the morning? I mean, right, what am I going to yeah. wear? You know, it's, yeah, uh, just check your phone. It'll just, they'll tell you. Yeah, exactly just check your digital wearing. wallet. They'll let you know what you can wear that day. And by the way, that may not be very far off from the truth, too. Right. Um, that, uh, I'm telling you, we need to be scared of this. And I realize that some people may have to go to the digital dollar for Social Security payments, you know, what have you. But that doesn't mean you can't get gold and silver now. Now, if you get a digital wallet and you're running, you know, the digital dollar, they may not let you buy gold and silver with that. Yeah. You have to keep that in mind, too. That is yeah. the freedom that we're looking for. Missouri is looking to make sure that that never happens here. Tennessee is doing it. Uh, Kentucky is doing it. Um, and I could go th through all the states. Montana is working on it. Um, Kansas, Texas, Maine, New Jersey, Arkansas, Idaho. Guys, if your state's not on the list and if you still have a... Uh, oh, Ron, one more thing I have to say. Yeah. I'm sorry, just thought of this. Um, for the last three weeks, I've not been returning emails. So, I mean, for all of you who've been sending emails, I am truly, truly sorry. If you could see what I'm doing in my life right now, you'd have to understand that I had to set a little cutoff point to get some other things done. A lot of it having to do with SB100, a lot of it having me, you know, just to go back to regular work, you know, so I can put food on the table, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, I'll tell you what, hopefully, hopefully in the next two weeks, I can get back to returning emails. For those of you who want gold and silver in your state, and, and you look, this is what I'm going to ask you to do before you email me on this. See what the deadline filing date is for your state, because you may have missed it already. I mean, that's happened in several states already. If you still have a window of opportunity, send me an email and literally make sure the subject is in all caps so it catches my attention because I get a lot of email, gang, a lot of email. And I do want to help. If there's a window of opportunity to file legislation in your state for gold and silver and you haven't done it yet, please, or if, I'm sorry, if you don't have it yet, uh, please send me an email, all caps in the subject line. So I, it will get my attention. I will help you once again with something to, you know, put together to send to your state. Um, I want to help you. Uh, and I'm sorry for the last three weeks, but part of that was even going out of town. Um, and uh, you know, so I will, I will get back on it. But we have 22 states. There's chances are there's more, but I can't spend the, the time looking through Legiscan. Uh, sound money, um, the Sound Money Defense League, I think is what they're called, is another excellent resource apart from the 10th Amendment Center to look at what states are doing what. But this is important. This is not, guys, let's look at this on a different level, at least until, you know, June. Let's yeah. think about gold and silver as survival, not about yeah. getting rich. And so I would act accordingly, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, we're not financial consultants, though. That's right. Well, thank you, Pat. Uh, hopefully we can look forward to having you here in the basement again in the next couple of weeks. Um, if hopefully any after the house hearing, after the house hearing, after we need to get house. together. Yeah, yep. that'll be, get some interesting updates on what's going on specifically mm -hmm. here in Missouri. And uh, I know earlier you mentioned the, uh, the website of your uh, yep. mofree.org Mo yep. and they can reach you through that. Yep. Uh, there's a contact button, I know, and, yep. and get on the mailing list because yeah, especially if up. you're in Missouri. Yes, if you're in Missouri. And uh, thank you, sir. And uh, be interesting to see how things uh, play out. But we'll, uh, we'll navigate these waters together. Okay, Ron, it's always a pleasure being on your channel. And thank you for providing an actual channel to the world for me to talk about how important it is that they actually get gold and silver legislation in their state. Thank you well, very much thank for that. Thank you. We're, we're honored to have you. We'll see you soon. All right. God bless you, man. See ya.